In the age we live in, we all know bigger is better. That's why our phones, our TVs, heck, even our trucks keep getting bigger. But if your truck is a few years old, its infotainment screen might be more on the, shall we say, modest side of things. Well, we're gonna fix that today because we're installing a 13 inch screen in this 2019 Super Duty. We're gonna take it from work truck all the way to Cybertruck. It's gonna be able to do it all. Wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, YouTube, Netflix, Play Games. So let's dive in and find out if upgrading your truck screen is worth the $1,000 price tag. Here is the box for the head unit that we're gonna be installing. It's for 2015 to 2020 Ford F-150 and 2017 to 2020 Ford Super Duties. It is made by a brand called Sedeva or Sedava. Honestly, I'm not too sure. Now it comes in a pretty basic box. The user manual is built into the screen, which I think is an odd choice considering you can't access it until you have it installed. So they should give you maybe like a QR code to download one that would be preferred. Here is our box of accessories. Everything is labeled, which is nice. We have a DVR cable, which basically allows you to add accessories by pulling power from the radio itself. We have your camera inputs, and I love that these are all labeled. Makes it super easy. We also have the harness to retain your factory USB, RCA audio output right there, auxiliary in. We also have an antenna. This is your Wi-Fi antenna right here, your GPS unit. I've used a lot of these aftermarket GPS units. They actually work great. And when installing any aftermarket head unit, you're not gonna be able to retain your factory microphone, at least not easily. So you will need an aftermarket microphone, which they provide to you right here. That's everything out of the first bag. We're gonna go ahead and open up the second bag now. We've got another antenna. This is for your 4G, so this is your cellular antenna right here. Once again, labeled nicely. More USBs, here's your factory harnesses. So this will allow you to connect to the truck. Reverse cam converters. Now this is a digital output. This will allow you to keep your factory FM radio. This is a second 4G antenna to install. This is the reverse camera converter. So you're gonna have this connect to your truck, and then this is what goes into the head unit for your backup camera. This is if you have a 360 camera. And this is the little magic box that does it all. So this will talk to the truck for you on your behalf to convert everything from the truck, such as AC controls, to the head unit. In the box, there is also a little microfiber and a SIM card adapter. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the screen itself here. Whatever buttons you have will be transferred to the bottom down here. Now what's nice about this screen is the fact that it actually sticks out a little bit, giving you that extra inch of space versus like a 12 inch. So it's cool that you're getting a 13 inch screen, but you still have physical buttons. Let's go ahead and get this installed. The first step into installing your new head unit is we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this mat up here, toss that aside, and then we need to lift this up with some pry tools. And you could hear that clip release right there. Now, unfortunately, it does feel like you need a lot of pressure to release this, but it is just four clips, two on each side. So I'm working on the back left one, and as I get the pry tool underneath it, yep, that one just released, so let's go ahead and repeat that on this side. I'm pulling up with my left hand, I'm gonna try to get this in here with my right, try to release the clip, and just like that, one goes here, 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 and here. And now, as you can see back here, there are two seven millimeters that we need to remove in order to bring this tray up and out. There we go. You can see it's basically coming up here from the back just fine. And now we need to release the clips from the front right here. Sometimes it's helpful to have two get up under here and lift together. and it came off here. So there's actually three clips that you need to release. And now we need to remove this harness from behind the speaker. There we go. And now we can set the speaker and this whole piece to the side. Now we're gonna remove these two seven millimeter bolts at the top of the radio. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove this by putting pressure on it and pulling forward. And you can see that that released one clip right there you wanna make sure you're lifting the plastic piece and that's gonna come off. If you grab lower than that, there's actually metal and we're just gonna go around the sides here and we're gonna pull the bezel out and it's gonna come out releasing the clips, holding it in place. Now we wanna go ahead and remove, there's 
a plug here, there's a plug on the back here, and there's two more down below. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these so we can get this disconnected. So you push in, oh, there we go. So let's take a look at the tab here. No tab on the right side or the side closest to you. This is the side with the tab that you wanna push down on to release it. There we go. So I used a plastic pry tool to go ahead and wedge this guy down right there. And you'll see right now, I'm gonna pull it out. Once I felt here, I was able to put pressure on that and that's actually what released it. I will tell you he's a firm one. There we go, and I got it. Let's see the point where you push in is right there. These bolts can easily fall behind your dash. So I'm going to bring them out and then I'm going to finish removing them by hand. Now we're gonna take off the ones over here. There's our second to last bolt right there. Getting this last one out here. Now that we have all the bolts removed, we're gonna pull it forward. We're gonna go ahead and pull this ad adapter off here. On the bottom, there's a little lever. You just push that in. Now you wanna be careful with where you're putting your, your uh, frame here because it is metal, so you don't wanna scratch up your plastic. So we're gonna move to this back one here. You just push down. This one is really firm. We're gonna try the plastic pry tool trick here. See if that'll give me some more leverage, and it did. So definitely been using these pry tools. I just use that instead of my thumb. Push down right there, and then bring the latch down like that and it'll release the plug right there. It's gonna come up and out, and now our screen is free. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove this unit right here, which was below the screen. Now we're just going to go ahead and pull this forward and disconnect any connections on the back of it. So I see one down here at the bottom Got it. Then there's another one next to it. Removed that one. Pulled that one right there on the top. And this one is probably going to be the same as well. Right there in the middle. Might help if you can get your finger in there, just like that. And now this part is totally free. Now we are outside the vehicle. We have both the old bezel right here. You can see the size of it next to the new screen here. And I will tell you, the quality of the knobs on the new one, despite uh, being more of a satin versus a chrome, they feel really good, very similar to OEM. So even though you're not reusing your factory knobs and buttons, it's a very similar feel for the knobs. The buttons are definitely a little bit softer on the aftermarket unit. Here, they have more of a solid press. Here, it is a little bit more mushy, for lack of a better term. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and flip this over, and if we look at the new screen here, you can see that the clips that are on the old one, they don't have these little orange retaining clips. So we need to transfer these factory clips over to the new bezel. So that's what we're gonna work on right now. One way to do that is with the flathead, but I'm gonna try to be a little bit less aggressive and use my favorite tools, the pry tools. Lift out underneath it. The problem is you need to pry on both sides. So I'm gonna grab a second one. I'm gonna lift from underneath and it's gonna come flying right there. And I dropped it over here. I see it, I caught it. So just be aware that these guys do like to go flying, but here it is. So all we're gonna do is just push it on the new screen, just like that. And it actually wiggles quite a bit, but it's on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of them. So actually it looks like we have one extra because there's two at the bottom, two on the sides and three up top. So it looks like you might actually have one left over. So you have your two sets of buttons here that we need to transfer to the new screen. They're gonna go in here. So we're gonna go ahead and push on the side here and we're gonna push it through the front of the screen. There we go, push it through. So you push down on the sides right here and push it through the front. So since this side came out of the passenger side, I'm gonna put it on the passenger side right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push them in like that and it clicks into place, and you have your factory set of buttons right there. Now let's go ahead and do it for the last pair right here. There we go. Pushed it through, it's gonna come out. 
flip it over. I'm gonna go ahead and push it in to the driver's side. And just like that, we now have our factory buttons transferred over to the new bezel. So now we're gonna be running the wire for the external microphone. Now, the way that we're gonna do this is we are going to remove this panel right here. The first step is there's two pieces right here and right here that both need to be removed by being pushed in towards the middle of the handle. You can use a flathead screwdriver as long as you are careful not to damage anything. So these don't actually come all the way out. They kind of just hang there. So I'm gonna just kind of make sure it's out of the way and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. There's really only one clip that you have to unclip and then pulls up and out of the way. There we go. So now that the bolts are exposed, these are 10 millimeter bolts that we're gonna be removing. This is just pressure fit once you have uh, removed those 10 millimeter bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can, there we go. Now this is plugged in. So you just kinda wanna set it aside. Now that we have this panel off, you will see that there are some factory wires on top of your airbag. Now you wanna make sure that your external mic wires do run along the factory wires. The reason for this is you do not want your uh, wire to get tangled up in the airbag or anything like that. You can use zip ties, you can use tape. There's a few different things you can use. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna use some zip ties. So this external microphone actually comes with two different attachments that you can use um, to basically install the microphone into your actual car. Now this is a clip right here, just like this, that we're gonna use today, but it also comes with a piece that can be, it's, it's 3M tape that you can stick to glass or something like that if you'd prefer to have that. I wanna keep this because I want the ability to be able to remove it if we don't like it or anything like that. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm gonna be working on the wire and I'm actually gonna start by putting the microphone where I think we're gonna want it. Yeah, probably the best. And the reason being one, it's out of the way, it's kind of hidden, and two, that's gonna give me the most slack possible for my wire to run my wire correctly, but also have the wire being hidden. But this is pretty secure up there. So just to try to hide the wire a little bit better, I'm gonna like run this wire through this hook a little bit. So when we tuck it, it'll actually tuck underneath. Now I will be able to hide that wire a little bit easier and it looks cleaner. So there we go. I'm gonna work on running this along that factory wire. I'm just gonna kind of find the best places. Again, I want to make sure it's a pretty tight fit so I have enough slack to run it underneath my driver's column to the back of the stereo. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing along that factory wire. There we go. Okay, that one's out of the way. So there we go. We have it all ran. So now is going to be the fun part. Right here, there's a little hole that we're gonna go ahead and feed this wire through. Um, you can attach it to a stiffer wire, but the hole is pretty big, so I do feel like it should just go right in without a problem. And then I should be able to go underneath and grab it from the underside. So I'm gonna look right up here, because there is a pretty clear pathway up to where I was feeding it through. And I believe this is it right here, yep. There it is. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this as tight as I can from the top, make sure nothing's tangled or twisted. It looks pretty good. So now we have all of this slack to go ahead and run over to the side where the actual head unit is. You can see Erica's fingers right there and I'm going to grab it oh, and I've got go. it. Pull it through. So what I did is I just ran it, pulled it pretty tight up in here, and then I zip tied it to these factory wires. And now that we went ahead and ran that wire, we are now good to go ahead and reattach the A pillar. I just went ahead and pulled off the weather stripping for a second just to realign the pillar and then put it right back into place. Now these plastic pieces, they just pop right back into place. You just gotta twist it, push in that bottom piece first, there you go. And then one more on this side. 
So we have four different antennas that we need to go ahead and make sure that they get mounted somewhere in this area up here. So the first one I'm gonna go ahead and do is our GPS. So when we tried to get the red backing off of the GPS, um, the adhesive, if there is adhesive, came with it and actually ripped the foam in half. So we went ahead and just put some 3M tape right on here. So we're gonna go ahead and there's this metal piece that we're gonna go ahead and secure it to. We did clean off the area using some rubbing alcohol beforehand and that one's good to go. That was our Wi-Fi that we just put in right there. So this is my 4G antenna that I'm gonna go ahead and install on one side right over here. Again, pushing it down a little bit further. There we go. And now the final antenna is our second 4G antenna. Going ahead, putting this right here. There we go. So these two are your 4G antennas. This one back here is your GPS antenna. And then towards the front is your Wi-Fi antenna. What we are doing right now is running the two USB ports down into the glove box. Now we already ran one and the way that we did this is there is a tiny little sliver. You can see my finger right there. There's a tiny little sliver that we were able to make it through that goes behind the head unit into the glove compartment. And that is where we're gonna run the other USB port. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna find the side with the USB right here. I'm gonna go behind the head unit. And you can see again, my fingers. Now it is a little bit of a tight squeeze, but there we go. Now we can go ahead and make these about the same length, kind of adjust the two wires as necessary. So I just took these wires just to kind of keep them out of the way. I slid them into this crack right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and test and see if that will work for us. So we had to drop the glove compartment, so I just squeezed it back into place. Looks like it's not gonna interfere. So now we're gonna start with connecting our harnesses and we're gonna start with the reverse cam connector right here. This is gonna go to the one that has a latch to it and it's keyed so you can't really mess this one up. So there's notches here and there's ridges over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this on and push it and it's gonna latch. So now we have that connection there and on this, we have one called USB power right there. That's actually gonna go to, this is labeled the power harness, actually labeled F-150 power harness. And on that, it has this female connector right here. And that's gonna connect to this male USB power. So make sure you have your pins aligned and it's gonna go right here like that. And it clicks right in. Off your power harness right here, there is this big black plug. Then you wanna grab your factory connection that's towards the bottom here. Looks like this. We're gonna go ahead and push that one in here. And it's gonna click in just like that. And then right next to that, there's another factory connection out of the same harness in the dash. This one just has these wires in it, still from that power harness. We're gonna go ahead and push that in right now. And then you're gonna to wanna to grab your antenna adapter that looks like this. And right back here is our factory antenna spot. So we're gonna push that in and it clicked in just like that. So these are the two factory plugs that were for our buttons up here, but on the new screen, they're actually down here at the bottom. So we need to get slack from these to go towards the bottom. What I saw underneath here is, so this wire is actually on an L-shaped bracket and it's just taped there. So I'm actually just gonna very carefully, you wanna be very careful not to cut the wire, but I'm just gonna go ahead and try to trim back the tape. That way we can hopefully not have to deal with the push pin and instead just be able to create some slack for us. Now I'm just gonna work on this side right here, doing the same thing. This side's a little bit easier because now I have the slack that I need to get it where we need to down here. So now we're gonna go ahead and just finish up a few last connections before we actually connect everything to the back of the screen. So we have this little red box right here that I'm gonna go ahead and attach to this white plug that's part of the power harness. You wanna make sure you put it in the right way. Now the next thing I'm going to do is this piece right here actually goes to one of our USB ports that we put in 
the actual glove compartment. From here, I can go ahead and plug it in. This connector is a different connector than I've ever seen, but there you go. Then I was looking at this bundle right here and I saw this yellow connector right here. Looking at this, it only has one area that is uncapped and it is marked as microphone or mic. So I know that this is my microphone cord, so I'm gonna go ahead connect it together like that. So I am running the SIM card holder right now the same way that we ran those USB ports earlier. Again, it is a little bit big, but once you get it through here, the wire should be just fine to go ahead and manipulate however you need it to. Uh, for some reason, this cord is connected to the back of the screen, so we had to wait to do that until we had the screen ready to be put into place. The antenna wires are a specific color. What I'm gonna start with first is this purple one right here. These are for the 4G antennas. I'm starting with these guys because they're probably going to be the most complicated being so close down to the bottom like they are. You want to line that up and push on. You're gonna push and then go ahead and screw it on. This blue guy right here is for the GPS. This gold guy that I'm twisting in is for the Wi-Fi. This purple pin is gonna go right here. I'm gonna go ahead and push that in. For a factory installation, it's not gonna be connected to anything, but we're gonna go ahead and plug it in anyway. This teal one is gonna go right next to the purple one. This is not really connected to anything. It just has some available wires. Um, but again, we're gonna plug it in anyway. Now I have another six prong, which I do believe goes down here based on the keys. Now this is a 12 prong which I believe goes down here, just like that. This is the camera input, that goes in right there. So this is the 10 pin USB line. So what I'm doing right now is just plugging in the hazard lights. Here are the two buttons that were originally on top of our old head unit that are now moved down below. So it looks like this is the biggest of our plugs right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and push it in. That works. That is where we're gonna be putting the power harness right there. This is the uh, USB eight pin harness. Before we make our final connection of our AM FM radio antenna, right here what we are dealing with is this plug right here because we cannot forget about our reverse camera. So this plug right here goes down and splits off into a few different pieces. One is for a 360 camera, the other you can see it says reverse camera input. Now if you go down here to that black connector that we connected earlier to the back of the head unit, you're gonna see all of these different female connectors right here. The one that you are looking for is the factory camera input. You remove the cover from the factory cam input and then you're gonna go ahead and connect these two connectors. There we go. So right now I'm plugging in the FM antenna adapter right underneath here. It is a very tight Plug. The interesting thing about this head unit is there's no place for us to reinstall the factory bolts from the original sink unit. So the bezel does have clips that will go into the factory dashboard. So all you should have to do once you have everything plugged in is push it in. So we're gonna give this a try right now. Oh, oh. Now before you finish putting the dash together, you're gonna wanna double check your radio and make sure everything's working correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and just check some basic functions. One important thing to check after installing your screen is to make sure your factory backup camera is working correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the truck and we're gonna check that out. Now it did take a few seconds, but you can see that our factory backup camera is working, complete with guidelines too. So that's really cool that your factory guidelines do transfer over. If your backup camera looks like this and you have double guidelines, what you're gonna wanna do is put it back into park, and then you're gonna come over here to your settings system, and then you're gonna go to settings guide, and then you're going to want to turn off dynamic guidelines. Once you do that, if we go back into reverse, you'll see that we just have the one set of guidelines. You're also gonna wanna check your steering wheel controls. So I went ahead and downloaded an app just to test music. So we can see here that if I press play, our volume down 
and our volume up over here on the steering wheel work as well as skip. Right out of the box, this screen was not set up for the proper AC controls, plus it also didn't have our heated and cooled seats option. So you'll wanna go to settings, system, and then setting guide, and you're gonna have two options here. So the first one, car model AC, make sure you click forward, and then there is no super duty option, so it's F-150, so it's high or low based off the trim package that you have. So if you have a more base truck, it's probably gonna be the low one, meaning you don't have features such as dual climate zone. Or if you do have those features, you're gonna want the high option, and then unless you have the 360 degree camera, you're gonna go ahead and click other. So these are the settings we had to use in order to get our AC controls to match the hardware buttons that we used to have in the truck. But there was still one more issue. We didn't have our heated and cooled seats like we had from the factory. You actually have to go back one option and go to seat and steering wheel, and then we had to enable heated and the cooled seats right there in the toggle switch. And after you make any changes here, you're gonna go ahead and click save and reboot. And you're gonna go ahead and click okay. So one thing I wasn't the biggest fan of was the default boot logo. The logo was a Ford Ranger, which I think was kind of an odd pick, but luckily because this is Android and you can customize it, I'm gonna show you how to swap out the default boot logo. So in the glove box, I actually have a USB thumb drive that I have connected to that screen. So if we go here and then we're gonna go into settings, we're going to go to user and then we're gonna go to boot logo and then we're actually gonna find the thumb drive that I have plugged into the screen, and there's an image right there, and then you can see that it successfully applied the boot logo. So now, if I was to save and reboot, we'll actually see that new logo appear. And we can see the Ford logo is now appearing instead of that generic Ford Ranger picture. So I will leave a link to this image down in the video description below if you want to update yours as well. So now we're going to go ahead and reassemble the top panel right here. Go ahead and reinstall the top two 7mm bolts. The next step is to go ahead and we're going to plug back in this speaker. Now when I go to go put this back in, this only has three clips in the front and then two screws in the back. So you do want to make sure you align your clips. And then you, it is pressure fit, so you're going to go ahead. Push it in, you can hear the clicks. So now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the two seven millimeter bolts that go right back here into these holes. So now we're gonna go ahead and place back this mat that goes right in the front right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and place this panel back. All this panel has is clips that we're gonna go ahead and clip into place right on top of the speaker. Now when it comes to the installation for this unit, it's pretty straightforward. So if you follow along with this video, it's not gonna be that difficult. And if something's not working like your backup camera or it's not powering on, just double check your connection. Now, under the hood of this Tesla style screen is a Qualcomm processor, but it's a mid tier one. It honestly is a solid choice in terms of performance and efficiency. It is paired with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, which, to be honest with you, is enough for your needs in a vehicle like this. But it does run on Android 11, while newer tablet style screens run on Android 13. But that doesn't really affect it, but it would be nice if it came with the newest operating system. I do like the fact that you still have physical controls, but it doesn't actually retain all your features in the hardware. Some of those, such as if you happen to have heated and cooled seats, are now going to be in your climate settings. If you want a screen that has the ability to retain all of your buttons, there are some that have a screen as well as a cutout in the bezel to retain the factory buttons. So just something you might want to consider. Now we did install this in a 2019 Super Duty with the BNO sound system. And to be honest with you, it sounds great. So it didn't mess up the premium package that came with this Ford truck. So I just want to go ahead and give you a quick overview. What you have here is a shortcut to your maps. It doesn't actually allow you to control the maps here, but anything that's going on, it is a live view of the maps itself. So you'll see your directions pop up here, but you won't be able to control it because it basically just opens up the maps. Down here, you have a weather widget that's based on your location, and this is your music player. So you can play, skip, and this will control whatever your last known music source was. Up here, we have brightness. Up here is gonna be a shortcut to your maps. Right here is going to be the default music player. So if you had like a thumb drive plugged in with music, that's how you access it. Here's your phone. This will be for video files that you have saved to the device or external storage. Here is how you access all your apps. And then finally, this is going to be car auto. So basically, if you want to do Android auto or CarPlay, you just change it using this button down here. So this app does both Android auto and CarPlay. Now, one cool thing about the screen is you actually can do split screen. So for example, we have our music player here and then we have our web browser here. So you could have two things going 
one at the top and one at the bottom. Now we actually did try some basic games here earlier and it was able to play them. It's going to be dependent on the application itself, whether it runs well. So if you try to run something too graphically intensive, it's not going to run that well. But the fact that you have the ability to run a lot of apps right here on your vehicle's infotainment system is really cool. And if you're wondering how the heated and cooled seats function, this is going to be your cooled seats and that's your heated seats. And it even has the levels for the different levels of heat that you want on in your seat. And then if you swipe down, it's gonna bring up the sub menu. It's a lot of redundant controls that you already have, but it is nice. It's kind of an iPhone style display right there in case you wanted to access something quickly, adjust your brightness, things like that. And just tap the screen and it'll go away. And that's about all there is to this screen upgrade. If you're interested in picking one up for your Super Duty, the link will be down in the video description below. And hey, if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give us a like, it really helps us out. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching.